she's a badass man, I mean big. Private Hudson, referring to the first Archon Queen from Aliens. Hey everybody, welcome to Adventures with Peps. Today we are painting the Alien Queen. This is pretty much a one-stop paint job. This isn't going to be fancy, guys. Uh, I primed the model black, then I heavily primed it grey over the top because I thought that made sense. And then we are using the Army Painter Speed Paint Grim Black. Then once that dries, I'll make a choice on whether I've finished the model or not. But that is it. Aliens are pretty easy to paint. Now, I decided to paint this model because uh, Hicks's second squad is now complete. So it felt like time to do some aliens again. I have the alien warriors already done. I'll make sure I drop a link somewhere for that. So it made sense to do the queen. That would then leave me four more warriors to do, which are the special ones from the expansion. But before I do them, I'll do a few more humans and get the terrain done and all that stuff. So we are nearing, nearing completion on these alien stuff. I'm quite impressed. I'm quite happy that I might be able to play a game at some point in the next couple of years. It's crazy how slow at painting I am. But while I'm doing this, it's not super exciting. So we're going to talk about the alien queen. The xenomorph queens are the largest and most intelligent variants in every xenomorph hive. They are usually the mothers of every drone and warrior, since they are the only ones to lay eggs. A queen is also known as an alien queen or a mother alien. The queen is much different to a regular xenomorph. For a start, she is much larger, being almost 15 feet tall, bigger than a T-Rex. Her posture is altogether more like that of a dinosaur than that of a humanoid, which the regular xenomorphs resemble. She also has a much larger brain with a defensive crest protecting her head. The most notable feature of the xenomorph queen, however, is the ovipositor in the lower part of her body, which produces numerous facehugger other xenomorph species she's eggs. She is very protective of her children and eggs and will go out of her way to help them. This mothering instinct was perfectly demonstrated in the 1986 Aliens film in which she chased the film's heroine Ellen Ripley after the Ripley burned all her eggs. While the Queen is the primary leader of the Xenomorph Hive, doesn't mean that they are the only supreme rulers of their kind, as some queen would molt into stronger beings whom a regular queen would end up following. These are known as an empress. The empress is a latter stage in the xenomorph life cycle and comes into being when a massive hive has created multiple queens to survive. The empress is theorized to be the queen whom has survived for a hundred years or more, whilst her long age makes her skin start to wrinkle. As the hive expands, to the point of having multiple queens that dwell within it, the Empress will rise to prevent conflict among them and serve as the matriarch of the hive, twice as large and boasts an even larger crest than the rest. An Empress has an additional pair of straight spines that flank the free spires of its crest, and there appears to not be many curves to the crest as there are with the crests of the other queens. There's a lot of crests in that line there. There are even more geometric lines and angles instead. Now, now, an empress has only been seen a couple of times, once in Aliens vs Predator, the movie, I think they called it a matriarch, and then also uh, the Arctic Queen in Aliens vs Predator, and I think also there was a computer game that mentioned one as well, but I can't for the life, it was probably Colonial Marines or something like that. But that also isn't the last version either. There was the Queen Mother. Now, the Queen Mothers only appeared in Dark Horse's extended universe and only on the Hive world. So take this with a pinch of salt if they actually existed or not. Uh, these ones were protected by elite drones known as palatins. Queen Mother's nest consisted of six orbs arranged around a central orb in which they reside. These orbs are interconnected and contain the prized royal jelly, which molts a drone or warrior into a new Queen Mother when one becomes absent or killed. Queen Mothers have an acute telepathic and empathic abilities, thus they are able to call to their hive over vast distances. Now this was dealt with in one of the books I believe called Female War. Uh, if you've not read it, read it. I have it. I'll take a picture of it if I can remember and maybe put that into this video. But the Queen Mothers are capable of melding to the minds of humans and they use this to their ability during the earth infestation covered in the novels. What makes a Queen Mother similar to a Queen is that they are both capable of laying eggs. The first Queen Mother was kidnapped by Ripley in Steve and Stephanie Perry's novel The Female War, leading to anarchy and chaos on 
the hive world. While a drone was morphing to take the previous mother's place, several deviant drones designated as red drones by the humans due to their dull burgundy colour were born that rebelled against the primary hive, and a countering red hive Red, led by a red queen mother was created. In Aliens Genocide, massive warfare had broken out between the two subspecies to rule over the planet as the dominant xenomorph species. A fleet of colonial marines were sent on a mission to retrieve the deceased mother's royal jelly located in the Black Hive in order to synthesize a highly addictive drug called Xenozip, also known as fire. The crew decided to destroy the red mother's hive to distract the drones of the original nest while the jelly was being extracted. The new queen mother was shot after killing a scientist during the extraction. There you go. So that is all of them and as you can see I am still painting this so maybe we'll uh, chop here and speed on down to the end. All right the final splodges of paint are going down. This is take, took a little bit longer than I expected. There's a lot of details to get covered and obviously watch out for streaking and splodging. But I think we are there, thereabouts. I've got a bit on its neck that I'm going to miss until later, which is super annoying. But we are going to put it down. I'm going to let it dry. I'm going to mess around with the base and then you're going to see the glamour shots. Hopefully you like it. If you do, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. I'm going to have a video posted up at the end that maybe you'll enjoy. It's how I painted the warriors, so give that a look. Otherwise, come join us on Discord. We'd love to see you there. And until next time, cheers for watching.